Mm -hmm. Ooh. You know, it's going to take me <laughs> about a week to recover. I've been in uh, absolute pain and agony and uh, not been able to get any sleep for over a week because I had the coof. My uh, actual taste and smell is finally coming back, which is wonderful. Wow. <laughs> uh, that's one of the rare instances that I've ever had in my life, and it's been bad. So forgive me as I crawl my way back to the world of the living. I appreciate the doctor that uh, gave me a, a prescription that basically fixed it overnight. That was a true lifesaver. Can't talk about it, however, on the media, but... Uh, One of the things that's fascinated me, I've always my entire life seen things differently than other people. And that's a good thing and a, and a bad thing. It's that, uh, you look at things from a completely different angle. And I've always fundamentally known, and it shocks me that other people don't see that, is that nature must be fundamentally extremely simple. And yet all of us, including me, and including yourself. Let's, let's go over a short list, a very short list of the things that we were taught to believe in. Nature is comprised of all sorts, this is what we were taught, okay? You and me. Nature is comprised of all sorts of different things. Yeah, we got electricity over here, gravity over there, electromagnetism over here. It's all sorts of particles, yeah. There's the up quark and the down quark and the electron and proton and the photon. <laughs> that a duality is a real thing. And by duality, I'm referring to polarization. The antinomies of existential existence. The Greeks and the Platonists and uh, Aristotle talked about suffering the antinomies. Fat, skinny, young, old, um, pleasure, pain, the antinomies of existential existence, i.e. being temporalized, partaking of a polarized world. A magnet, of course, that's the subject that I wrote a book about. Spent countless thousands of hours in deep thought figuring out what magnetism is. We think that, well, a magnet has a north pole and a south pole. And it doesn't. It actually has the inverse of counter space. Polarization is nothing other than the three-dimensional force vector. Polarization is just the three-dimensional force vector of the loss of energy or inertia. Polarization doesn't imply two, doesn't imply duality, rather the attributional nature of the one. People don't find reconciliation with the one. Now, if someone is, even if they're an atheist, okay, which is a true atheist is a materialist, an atomist specifically, you must, they must necessitatively confess to one thing only. Of course, to them, it's energy and random happenstance, but everything must be irreducible to one thing. So it doesn't matter if someone is religious or they're atheistic. True philosophia, the love of wisdom, i.e. philosophy. We have to look at things necessitatively that Mother Nature cannot have all these different things in it. It's not a hodgepodge soup of countless things that are sitting in a bowl. From the perspective of a materialist, that would be the one thing in the bowl, right? But this doesn't follow Occam's razor. It's not logical. It can't work that way. Don't people ask themselves these questions? There's only ever been two postulates for ultimate reality. One has been atomism, and the other one's been the ether. The reconciliation of light and matter and energy must all be one thing and one thing only. I made predictions years ago before these things um, actually came to light 
And of course I have the video proof that I said it well before it was discovered. One of the things that I actually said is that when a black hole was uh, properly, properly photographed, that it would uh, look uh, exactly like a ferro cell. Yeah. I said that. Look exactly like a ferro cell image, or the supercell. Well, when the image came out of a donut ring, yeah, yeah it kind of did. And then they actually did a high resolution of that black hole, and we could actually see the constructive and destructive lines of interference. And so my prediction was 100% accurate on that. The other thing that I predicted is, uh, and that was recently discovered about a year and a half ago, is that matter is fundamentally high energy light. I said that many times, many, many years ago. Been saying it ever since. Kind of humorously called it hard light. There are not different atoms. Everything is a compound of hydrogen. If there's only one fundamental particle, we all know that uh, neutrons become photons after 17 minutes free from the nucleus. There's only one fundamental particle. Nikola Tesla, Eric Dollard, James Clerk Maxwell, and others said the same thing. There's no such thing as an electron particle. It's an abstraction. Um, J.J. Thompson said the principle of the electron is one unit of dielectric induction. Why is it that nobody goes looking for simplicity? Because simplicity could be the only true picture of nature. I spent a lot of time thinking about stuff like this, you know, years actually. We can't reconcile complexity with nature. The universe is complex, but at its very core, everything is irreducible to one, one thing only. No branch of science has ever defined a field. It's really simple to define what a field is. A field is an energy, I mean an ether perturbation modality. No branch of science has ever defined the word energy, too, by the way. They never have defined the word energy. I'd like to go a little further down the rabbit hole in this uh, coming a week as I recover from suffering really bad, incredible pain and misery for the past week, uh, suffering in the coof where, you know, cold chills and night sweats and whatnot, loss of a uh, sense of uh, smell and taste, which is uh, slowly coming back. And uh, take an overview of simplicity into looking into natu natura and naturans. I say Mother Nature, not that I think that, uh, that the fundamental of something is literally Mother Nature. I just use that as an abstractional reference to the simplicity of, of uh, what is in nature. But all of these scientists and all these people that we were taught to believe in, saying that you know, electricity is over here, gravity is over there, we have this over here and that over there, it can't work that way. Nature can't have multiple sources in it. It's just not plausible. It's completely impossible. Even if someone were an atheist, we can't confess to multiple sources of everything that we see in nature. It's not possible. There are no dualities in nature. Polarization is not a duality either. Well, a North Pole and a South Pole. Sure there is. Magnet has two poles on it. There's a duality. Well, it's not. It's the three-dimensional extrapolation of a force vector, which is nothing other than the attributional nature of the dielectric, because that's all that magnetism is, is the extrinsic nature of the dielectric. Magnetism is, by the way, a dielectric field. The loss of that energy or inertia, original definition of inertia, manifests as magnetism. Well, there's no polarity or duality or duplicity in a magnet to imply or consider that polarization is somehow an inherent contradiction or a bifurcation 
or more than one thing in relationship to the one is untenable and impossible. The only way to see things accurately is to see things as multiplicative manifestations and uh, of one and one thing only, that being energy or the ether, i.e. ether perturbation modalities, as in the case of fields, because there's no such thing as gravity versus magnetism versus dielectricity versus electricity. All of these are one thing and one thing only, like ice, water, and steam. It's the only way to see nature. Some people say, well, why is this really important? I mean, it's not going to make you rich. Not meaning me, I mean anybody. There's a noble virtue of wanting to know the answers to nature. There's a great virtue in it. It's an old saying that the unexamined life isn't worth living. You heard that one before? It's going to take me about a week to kick myself back into normal video mode. <laughs> I've been suffering so much and so sleep deprived from being in so much pain from this uh, sickness that I'm mostly recovered from. That's okay. At least I made it out the other side. I kind of got chewed up and spit out the other side, but at least I made it out the other side. Thanks so much for watching and Happy New Year. It shouldn't take me more than a few days to get back on my feet completely. <laughs> you can tell I think I got cold sweats right now. <laughs> Part of the recovery process. Thank you. Goodbye.